Today we got two of Batman's greatest enemies going head to head. The League of Assassins versus Court of Owls. Who comes out on top? Well, let's find out. Eyes up. Stay sharp. Stay down. Final warning. I could do this all day. The League of Assassins is an ancient army of killers led by Ra's al Ghul that often comes into conflict with Batman. Many of the greatest martial artists and mercenaries in the DCU have been members of the League of Assassins at some point. The League of Assassins was founded by Ra's al Ghul some unknown time many years ago, designed and created to be the fang that protects the head. However, Ra's al Ghul decided not to directly head the League himself for a time and instead appointed Ebenezer Dark, aka Dr. Dark, to be the first official head of the League of Assassins, and the sensei was his second. These two men are fundamental to the League that we know today, because although there have been countless skilled fighters in the League throughout the years, we view that most leaders of the League being master martial artists, Dark himself didn't actually depend on physical prowess or fighting skill. Instead, as an assassin, he relied more on careful planning, manipulation, ambushes, and death traps, as well as including a variety of carefully considered weapons and poisons. Although the League has had an inner circle of elite fighters, with a large number of warriors trained in the martial arts, the League under Dark's tenure as leader reflected his personal methodology. After all this, the Sensei took over as the leader of the League, and still utilized many of Dark's methods and techniques but led them in a much more brutal direction, even attempting to unleash an artificial earthquake at one point. However, even though the League of Assassins will sometimes use indirect or subtle methods like poisons or traps, they're also all still skilled fighters and highly trained killers. The members of the League are even forced to demonstrate complete and utter willingness to die at a word from their leader. Then for much of the League's current history, any member to fail and an assassination attempt was in turn targeted by the League, forcing their assassins to either complete the job or die. The League of Assassins has also bred and created some of the absolute best fighters in the whole DC Universe, such as Ra's al Ghul, Lady Shiva, David Kane, Merlin, Cassandra Kane, Talia al Ghul, and Damian Wayne, who are all skilled enough to match up against or even beat someone like Batman. So that's what we got in one corner, the League of Assassins. But enter the ring another group of villains that constantly plagued Batman, the Court of Owls. The Court of Owls is an ancient organization, a conspiracy that has controlled Gotham for centuries. They are a violent cabal, uses architecture and murder to a political influence throughout history, with their legend being told only through whispers and a nursery rhyme that bears their name. To care out their interest, the court employs a breed of highly trained assassins known as talents. The Court of Owls usually just has one active talent at a time, being handpicked from Haley's Circus as a child. But using Mr. Freeze's technology, the court was actually able to revive dead talents and give them increased physical abilities and regenerative powers. They are strong enough to kick Bruce Wayne through a pane of unbreakable glass, crack concrete or marble walls with their punches, and even dent reinforced steel doors. They're also superhumanly durable, being completely unfazed by a kick from Black Canary, or having Bruce apply a hundred pounds of pressure to the windpipe, which is actually ten times more than was required to knock someone out. They've wished screams that can shatter skulls, tranquilizer of darts capable of knocking out five men, and as if all that isn't enough, they've also got an insane killing factor on top of that. Talons are capable of easily taking gunfire at point-blank range, even bolts the head, and if their bones are broken or knocked out of the socket, they just pop them back into place. They've come back from 30 to 40 story falls, revived from having their heads blown off. When Nightwing shoved his screamer stick into one's head, it was back up a few seconds later. The Talons are also all insanely skilled fighters, with just one of them 
being able to easily take down military units with automatic weaponry. They've also battled through entire sectors of Arkham inmates, including people like Clayface, and have held their own or beaten Batman, Nightwing, Red Hood, Batgirl, Batwing, Robin, and Black Canary. They've also got some seriously powerful weapons, including throwing knives, bow and arrows, swords, and axes. And their swords and knives are so sharp, they pierce through Red Hood's helmet or Batman's mech suit, which shouldn't have been possible. So who wins? Well, let's break it down. Now, this is an organization versus organization fight for control of Gotham City. But just in the whole scenario at large, Batman and the Bat family won't be present, even though it is taking place in Gotham. So who wins? Well, one thing we have to address is when we're talking about big organization fights like this is that it's basically a battle between cannon fodder. What I mean by that is that even though the average assassin in the league an average town in the court are hyped as being highly trained fighters and skilled killers and assassins, they can actually be pretty easily taken out by the main hero or villain like Batman or Deathstroke. Like Batman, none of the members of the Bat family, really pretty much every street level hero in DC, have been able to plow through members of the League of Assassins and take on plenty of them all by themselves. Just looking at the average League of Assassins member, they honestly aren't that impressive, at least not in the world of comic books. On the other hand, the Court of Owls has some of the most competent cannon fodder out there, the talents. I mean, just one of them has the skills to battle against Batman, whereas, like we said, Bruce can pretty easily take down whole groups of assassins. The towns of trash people like Robin, Nightwing, Batwing, and for the most part, you can put any of them on that skill level. On top of that, the Talons are all superhuman as well. Now, originally the Talons were just regular, normal humans. But after being brought back from the grave by Mr. Freeze's technology, they're strong enough to kick through glass that was supposed to be completely unbreakable. But that was mostly because of just a well-placed kick and targeting the right point on the pane of glass, so let's up the ante a bit. They've pummeled a Batman into concrete walls and broken them. They punched hard enough to dent reinforced steel doors, and even Batman can't escape their grip. Some of the towns are even stronger, like the Butcher. The towns are also superhumanly durable, be completely unfazed by certain attacks from Black Canary and Batman, and even with the attacks that definitely should have put them down, like enough tranks to take down five men, or a shot from Canary that can shatter skulls. Then, on top of all that, the reanimate towns have a nice healing factor. They will take gunfire at point blank range, turn their heads 180 degrees around, and even get back up and keep on fighting after having the head blown apart or weapons shoved into their brain. Basically, the towns are a whole lot more dangerous, a whole lot more powerful, and are just on a completely different level than the normal member of the League of Assassins. And even though the League has more members, the towns can definitely counter that with their greater level of skill just like Batman and the Bat family do. And it doesn't hurt that the towns are just damn near impossible to permanently put down. However, while the towns would generally sweep with the League of Assassins Assassins, this is an organization versus organization fight. And that means that the League of Assassins have some serious advantages here as well. For starters, they just dwarf the court when it comes to size and scope of reach. The Court of Owls primarily focuses on Gotham City and so it should have a home field advantage in this fight. But the League has bases of operation all over the world, and are definitely a global threat, instead of just a city-level threat like the Court. They're also masters at manipulation, stealth, and intrigue. Now, of course, that's not to say that the Court of Owls aren't extremely proficient at this as well. They managed to remain hidden in Gotham for centuries, as the city built up around them being thought of as nothing more than whispers, folk legends, and conspiracy theories. Then when they did come to the light, they would outsmart and outwit Batman, bringing Bruce to his breaking point and just tore him down both mentally and physically. An impressive feat, to be sure, and something that's very, very difficult to do. I mean, this is Batman we're talking about here. But thing is, the League of Assassins has done this exact same thing during Tower of Babel. They are able to outsmart Batman by stealing his plans, formation right out from under his nose. 
then broke him in a much deeper and more personal way than the court did. Instead of just trapping him in an underground maze, that she stole the bodies of his parents, Thomas Martha Wayne, which is just super dark. Then the up to ante, the League did just defeat Batman. They actually took down the entire Justice League. They managed to convert Marshman to his skin into magnesium, causing him to burst into flames. They used Scarecrow's fear toxin to turn Aquaman aquaphobic, plant hypnotic suggestions in Green Lantern's head, causing him to go blind, shot Flash of a Viber Bullet, giving him seizures at light speed, injected a nanite in Wonder Woman's ear, forcing her into a virtual, never-ending battle against an opponent that she can't defeat and simply exposed Superman to kryptonite. Granted, all this was using Batman's contingency plans and his information on the League's strengths and weaknesses, but they still did steal it from Batman, and that's insanely impressive in its own right. My point is, while the court can come up with plans, manipulate, and break their opponents, the League can as well, and they're just better at it. That's one advantage of the League's corner. Second advantage is that they get plenty of skilled fighters as well, and they're more skilled than the talents. Like I said, this is an organization versus organization fight, and that means not just talents versus normal assassins in a fight, but it'd be talents versus everyone in the league in a fight. If the league really wants to win, they're probably going to play all their cards and not pull any punches. That means bringing in people like Ray Sal Ghul, Lady Shiva, David Kane, Merlin, Cheshire, Sensei, Bronze Tiger, and Sportsmaster. The League even has some people with bonafide superpowers, like Plague, Nightstorm, Blank, Stone, and many more. And really, basically every member of the League is a highly trained fighter and killer, with the higher-ups and leaders being even more skilled and impressive. Not so with the Court of Owls, as the Talons are the fighters trained to care at their interest with leaders and the members haven't shown any skill or ability in a fight. And also, even though the towns are impressive and skilled, it's not like they're completely infallible. For starters, the Bat family was able to beat them. That means that the more skilled members of the League will beat them as well. And even though they're relatively new to the DC Universe, the towns have even had some low showings too, just like members of the League. I mean, just recently during the Robins War storyline, the court unleashed some berserker towns with the potential to destroy thousands and end whole wars. But yet they were beaten by Robins who weren't even really trained. So with all that being said, end of the day, who wins? Well, like we said at the beginning, this was just a fight between the towns and the normal league assassins. The towns would sweep. Pretty easy victory for them. But as I've been stressing now, this whole video, it's an organization versus organization fight. That's where the League of Assassins takes the edge and the ultimate victory. They dwarf the court in both numbers and resources, have incredibly skilled fighters of their own, some even with superpowers, and are just better, manipulating, planning, and breaking down opponents. The court says in the numbers, power, or resources to take the League down. The League of Assassins win. But, what do y'all think? I would love to hear your thoughts. Sign off in the comments down below. Also, be sure to that like button, the subscribe button, and turn on notifications to join the Fan Co. Army. And I will see y'all next time.